Tumblr was the perfect example of digital democracy. It was a place without boundaries where communities could flock and they could feel safe. And Tumblr had it all from tackling racial issues to sexual diversity to fan fiction. It even had the numbers to prove that it was successful. And it was a hit with millions of users and billions of global views per month until sex got in the way. Or actually, until sex got out of the way. Let me explain in today's episode of Company Forensics. On December 17th, 2018, one decision changed everything for this company. It was the beginning of the end. The subsequent fall wouldn't slow down, leading to the social network's complete disappearance. All that remains now is a graveyard packed with blogs and gifts. But to understand how Tumblr died, we must look back at how it was born. Tumblr came to exist out of the inefficiency of other companies. David Karp had been waiting for anybody to create a good tumble blog platform and these were short form blogs that were easy to consume so you would tumble along reading many one after the other hence of course the name this form of blogging surged in the early 2000s with anarchia and projectionist carp loved them but saw one problem with them neither platform allowed users to create content so there was a big chance and that was what carp was waiting for but nobody did anything so of course he did during a two-week contract gap he and developer Marco Arment punched out the initial idea for Tumblr. It launched in 2007 and the platform was all about speed. Writers could get their ideas out there as soon as possible and then readers could consume them at the same speed. Plus authors could add videos and GIFs and images. So each post was as varied as they came. At least the way that I understood it, it was kind of like Twitter um, and kind of like Instagram that it had uh, a lot of images and uh, you could also, um, it, it, you know, it had built in community there and lots of people looked at it, except that it was geared towards writing longer material. And that was, of course, always the problem with Twitter. You could you know, write things in 140 characters, but that really wasn't good, especially for somebody who creates languages like me. It wasn't good for describing something in detail. And Tumblr seemed to uh, fit the perfect uh, niche for that. The tiny nuggets of content went by fast and people just loved this experience. And two weeks after launching, the platform had 75,000 users. And by the beginning of 2008, it had doubled that number. Carp wanted to reach 1 million users before the year's end, and his ambitions weren't that far off. After all, it seemed that Tumble was unstoppable. In late 2007, Carp raised $750,000 for 25% of the company, his first round of venture capital. In February 2009, Tumblr released the Tumblr feature and it allowed users to post whenever they wanted so now creating content was even easier that year the platform reached 50 million views and thousands of new users every day getting even more funding totaling 35 million dollars in just two years by 2012 tumblr had even signed contracts with adidas but carp had quite a point of view regarding ads which would eventually prove deadly. Because for now, all of these numbers fail to represent Tumblr's sheer importance in social media. This place was vital to so many people. It was that problem where there, there really weren't enough people using it. Like you'd share something on Twitter and maybe they'd come and look at it. But Tumblr seemed to just have a built-in community that was really big. And it also made it really easy to share something that somebody else had created without, you know, while retaining the attribution, uh, which was uh, which was ideal. And so I just thought, eh, why not? This, this seems like a good fit. The very essence of Tumblr was freedom. You could publish anything you wanted and you'd be home free. Censorship was low, so Tumblr was a pillar for democratizing content. Where people can retweet you, right? Where your, uh, you know, whatever you're writing can get amplified if it, you know, just happens to hit the right vein. I think that, you know, the lack of censorship was partly what made it, um, it was an appeal certainly for other users and it's part of what made the base so big. Everything that was banned on other social media platforms ended up on Tumblr, and yes, one of those things is sex. Sex as a whole became essential to Tumblr. At the same time, Tumblr became crucial to those who created adult content. When Tumblr reached peak popularity, 12% 
of its top accounts were adult oriented. And let's be clear, we're not talking only about porn. It was just sex in general from your hardcore to softcore porn, educational content and SDIs and safe sex. It proved rule 34 exists on the internet. If it exists, there is porn of it. So no wonder the LGBT community loved it because it felt like a safe space. And yes, there was kinky content, but that was fine in Tumblr because that was what Tumblr was about. If you didn't consume this content, then you still could go on fan fiction or conspiracy theories and blogs about mental health, just to name a few ideas. But of course, this lack of censorship wasn't without its drawbacks. The first challenges arose in 2012 when Tumblr had to deal with a specific type of content. Posts about self-harm and eating disorders were increasing in numbers. So Tumblr launched PSAs between posts that carried tags such as hashtag Finspiration. And that's a great effort, but the company also targeted tags such as hashtag mental illness. So as you can see, it isn't as easy as it sounds. After all, this could pass as censorship as noble as it was. Still in 2012 and 2013, it seemed that the actions had worked. Content deemed harmful was now somewhat filtered and users easily read the PSAs, but it wouldn't remain that way for long. Hold on guys, sorry to interrupt, but before we continue the story, I wanna talk about today's sponsor. Cause have you ever come across a calendar that looks like this? And then how do these people get anything done? My calendar doesn't look too different from it. And as you can see, I don't have a lot of free time. So if you're like me, I think that a platform like Taskade can really, really help. Taskade is a Y Combinator starter that helps you level up your productivity and get things done in this unified workspace. You can manage tasks and write documents and chat with your team and all of this stuff in real time on web and mobile and desktop apps. When I just have a bunch of to-dos and ideas swimming in my head, I use Taskade like a pin C because it's really hard to focus. And I turn to Taskade to declutter my head and to document my thoughts. And then I can just focus on solving and checking each one of those tasks. Teams and individuals can use Taskade to create checklists or mind maps and workflows. And whether you're managing projects alone or planning future milestones with your clients or your team, getting stuff done with Taskade is super simple and fun. You can of course collaborate with your team on the same page and edit projects in real time. Taskade is free to use for individuals and for teams, and you can sign up for free at Taskade.com or with the link in the description. And you can get a free one-year upgrade in Taskade if you use the offer code SLIDELY. Only the first thousand people will be able to use this code, so please don't wait. Link in the description. Let's get back to Tumblr. Now, when we say that Tumblr was popular, it's because it was massive. In 2014, it overtook Instagram as the fastest growing social media platform globally. Tumblr seemed unstoppable, even if it wasn't perfect. And you can see where this is going and we've seen enough stories to know where this is headed. But at the time, Tumblr was riding high and it was a very appealing company. So Yahoo wanted Tumblr and wasn't afraid of paying big bucks. In 2013, they paid no less than $1.1 billion in cash for Tumblr. And the impact was immediate. Scott Galloway we called this the worst and the best acquisition in tech for that year. But again, the impact of Yahoo's acquisition was immediate and not in a good way. The truth is that nobody trusted Yahoo. Many left as soon as word got out that Yahoo was buying Tumblr because Yahoo had earned this reputation for being a toxic work environment and a knack for killing startups. Around the merger, 30 of the 40 startups that Yahoo had acquired under Mayer's rule had already closed. And to make matters worse, it didn't only affect employees. Users were also pissed. Almost 170,000 Tumblr users petitioned to stop the purchase as soon as news broke out. And of course, corporate managers don't really give a damn about these petitions. Plus, Melissa Mayer, the infamous Yahoo CEO, had promised that she wouldn't screw up Tumblr. But the problem is that Yahoo isn't exactly known for progressive or for diverse content, or for doing things well for that matter. So not screwing Tumblr would be a challenge. Under Yahoo's ruling, Tumblr had to step up its filtering, so the platform started adding the adult tag on all posts that had any nudity. But this tiny little gesture had some massive implications because it contradicted the very essence of what made Tumblr great, but the bad news didn't stop there. There was a core problem between Yahoo and Tumblr and what was gonna happen with the platform, and that was advertising. Carp disliked the idea of Tumblr advertising for revenue, and when he did create advertising such as with Adidas, it had to be tailored for Tumblr. And today, this idea isn't crazy. Like, look at the type of fantastic ads that people create for TikTok. But it was forward thinking and very exciting back then. Unfortunately, not scalable at the time. And then there was the platform itself. Keep in mind that at one point, Tumblr was growing faster than Instagram. So what happened? Tumblr wasn't particularly easy to use. First, it wasn't mobile first and Instagram was. And 
the world was transforming into mobile around these years, if you remember. And then the app itself was complex. It was easy once you mastered it, but it took more time to learn and to use it than Instagram. It was this big learning curve. And then there was the aspect of democratizing content. You could follow popular accounts, but there was no way of knowing how many users, how many followers they have. So this idea of an influencer, which is a business in itself, and we made a, one of my favorite videos about that, this idea didn't exist. And we've seen how essential influencers can be for the economy. All these factors added to Tumblr's demise. And the final blow came with another sale. I enjoyed using it, I think, less and less because it just became a lot of work. Uh, but I mean, I kept using it because honestly, like, so you have this inbox where you can ask somebody questions and my inbox had thousands of asks in it, just thousands. And I would try to get through them because I mean, it was really the, it was the most accessible way that people that actually enjoyed my languages could talk to me. And I wanted to be there for them for that. They were implementing all of these things. Like they, <laughs> there was the, the famous example of them not allowing female presenting nipples on on Tumblr, uh, apparently male presenting nipples were fine, but female presenting nipples were not. And um, and the thing was a lot of my fan base, especially my family fan base on Tumblr was LGBTQ plus youth. And um, this was something that was very important to them. And I was like, you know, and not only that, it was something that was affecting them. Because I know that there were uh, a lot of people who were using it for, you know, not safe for work content, um, whether it was for themselves, like as a consumer or as a producer, this was affecting them. And I was like, well, you know, I am whether, you know, rightly or wrongly. Because after the Yahoo merger, Tumblr floated in uncertainty. The platform didn't lend itself to becoming profitable through ads, so Yahoo didn't really invest any money in innovating it. It was this vicious cycle, but let me remind you that Yahoo paid $1.1 billion for this company, so they had to do something with it. And all that Yahoo did was just worsen the situation. So let's take a look at this culture. Tumblr had a great company culture, but Yahoo didn't. It's, it's that simple. So in 2015, when Yahoo integrated the two sales teams, this great exodus occurred. Tumblr's sales executives just left. The problem was that sales executives were crucial. It turned out that Mayer wasn't living up to her promise of not screwing Tumblr up. That year, she set the sales goal at $100 million for a platform that didn't work well with advertising at all. And the idea was ludicrous and pretty impossible, honestly, at the stage that the company was in. So of course, one year later, Tumblr failed to reach those sales figures. And the company was so far off that Yahoo wrote down its value by $732 million. That's almost 75% less of what it had paid for Tumblr in the first place just a couple of years back. The bad thing was that Yahoo itself was in line for a merger. In 2017, Verizon acquired Yahoo, which was even worse news for Tumblr. First of all, as soon as it happened, David Karp announced that he was just leaving the company for good. The merger just didn't fit with his views, and it seemed that he left at the right time. The next big blow came just months later in November 2018. Overnight, Tumblr disappeared from the Apple Store. An audit had revealed underage sexual abuse on the platform. Though Tumblr removed the content immediately, Apple was having none of it. And that's how we landed on that date that changed everything. December 17th, 2018. Tumblr banned all adult content and it wasn't only porn, it was everything. Any videos, photos, gifs, everything, even illustrations. If it had the slightest sign of sex, it was gone from the platform. Users had little to no chance to back their content up, but once the algorithm bots ravaged the platform, it'd just be all gone. So millions of bloggers who had turned to Tumblr to express themselves were powerless in no time. Plus they lost their content. Tumblr had ceased to be that uncensored haven, and it was for good at this time. Cyber protests followed, but Tumblr just wasn't yielding, or really Verizon. Verizon was the company that took the blow immediately. Three months after the decision, Tumblr lost 30% of its audience and just kept tumbling down. By January 2019, visits had dropped by 20, 20 million per month, and by February, it had lost close to half of its monthly activity. Even its return to the App Store couldn't save it from this chopping block. But there is a not-so-dark future for Tumblr, and that is what's fascinating about this story that Tumblr as a platform is still somewhat appealing. Tumblr wasn't working for Verizon, so when Verizon hinted at a sale, Pornhub expressed interest out of all companies. Pornhub had even promised to bring adult content back. And if you wonder how 
Pornhub even makes money to acquire companies, you should watch a video about Pornhub. But let's face it, Tumblr was a challenging sale. From the massive value drop to censorship, the negatives were just far too many to outweigh the positives. So even Pornhub pulled out of that deal. Now, Tumblr, as we knew it, had disappeared. Still, Verizon needed anybody to buy this failing platform for any money at all to be able to recover something. Not pennies, but close enough. Verizon sold Tumblr for $3 million after a $1 billion acquisition. This is a three, nearly $3 million acquisition. That's not even 1% of what Yahoo paid. And who would end up buying this chart carcass of free speech? Well, that would be Automatic. That is the biggest website provider in the world. You might not know about them, but you have heard one of the most popular products, which is WordPress. So you can say that Tumblr isn't dead, I mean, yes, these guys from Automatic have said that they are not bringing back adult content for now, but that there's still potential. First of all, Tumblr is a cheap product with a massive database. $3 million is honestly not a bad price to pay for it. It still holds more than 500 million blogs. In early 2022, the name Tumblr has graced articles in prominent publications such as The New Yorker. And with good reason, experts agree that integrating a social network, e-commerce, and content creation could actually be the future for Tumblr. And I mean, maybe it's doable. That's what we're talking about it anyway. It's not completely dead. But the bigger question remains, will Tumblr return to its original ways where you could talk about everything? I honestly don't know if that could exist in today's world. We'll have to see.